Good evening, it's Apostle Robert Bryan, and we're getting ready to start Dig Deep Bible Study. I am so excited about tonight. I'm glad for all of you that are with me on tonight, Lord. And we just want to get, well, let's just get started with some prayer because we're dealing with spiritual gifts. And I need you to understand how important it is. So I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump right to it for the next 30 minutes. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that the words of my mouth represent the meditations of thine heart. In Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. Amen. Listen, last week, I spent a lot of time, I, I, I basically ran through everything that you find in chapter 12 of the book of Corinthians. And I went from the beginning to the end and I talked about the gifts and, and the types of gifts and how they're all connected to the body. This week, what I want to do is to, is to kind of break down exactly what Paul was trying to talk about as it concerns spiritual gifts. He was talking to the Corinthian church, and in talking to the Corinthian church, they were a, the, the biggest problem. He was sending them a letter because of the problems that they were facing in the church. And the biggest problem that they were having was is they were a very gifted church. But what we need to understand about having gifts from God is that no gift, no ability, no endowment from God should ever be abused or the cause of controversy. And that's exactly what the church of Corinth had going on. The Old Testament, as it concerns God using gifts, had uh, were, were specifically designed to do it this way. In the Old Testament, what they did was um, the people were allowed to, uh, anybody that a gift God wanted them to have, he would specifically endow the individual, such as Moses, such as Elijah, as, as Samuel. All of these people were endowed with specific gifts. However, to do what God called for them to do. But when Jesus came and died on the cross and sent back the Holy Spirit, all of that changed. Because at that point, everybody, every gift was available to everyone. I need you to get this and understand that. Every gift is available to everyone. Okay? But the difference is, is we must understand how we use these gifts. And, and Paul is now writing this particular passage of scripture because he's saying that there is a danger of being ignorant about spiritual gifts. We don't ever want to be ignorant about what spiritual gifts provide and what they do for us and what they bring to the table. But, and this is why he's, he's writing this letter, because if, if we're ignorant about a spiritual gift, um, we can wind up using it for the wrong way and causing people problems, okay? And these gifts are given to us for God, for the edifying and the equipping of the kingdom. They're not given to us for our own personal greed, personal glory, or anything of that nature. They're specifically given them to us for that reason, okay? So in other words, but he doesn't give every gift to everybody, okay? Uh, the story of the five talents explains how gifts can be can be given to everyone. One gets five, one gets two, one gets what one. But the bottom line is, is we should always look to do more with our gifts than what we originally found out about them. I remember the first time that I found out about uh, uh, me being able to pray for healing. I didn't even really know what it was. I was just doing it. And, and I was praying for people because I've realized that prayer changes everything. But I didn't realize until much, much later that it seemed like a lot of times when I prayed for somebody for healing, they got what I prayed for. And 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 it didn't matter if they were uh, uh, a Christian or not. It was just that I, I prayed and people would get what I prayed for. I didn't understand it. I, I just went with it. But once I began to understand it, I began to take much more care in how I did it. And that's what Paul is trying to sell, to tell us. We can't be carried away into using our gifts for idols and things of that nature to do what we want to do. And this is the problem that a lot of people have with the church today. Because the church, we have people in the church who are gifted, but they use their gifts to create personal gain. And that should never be how we use our gift. Your gift should make room for you. Your gift should provide a way and a means for you to be taken care of for the rest of your life. But your gift should never, ever be used primarily for personal gain. 
Okay? Everybody, I mean, I remember when I realized long ago I was in the military and I had to speak in front of people. And, and I asked my supervisor, I said, how'd I do? He said, you did fantastic. And then the next time, it was right after I had got a, a DUI and I had to speak, he told me, he said, you was a little tight today. He said, but you were still great because it took a lot of courage to go up there and talk about what I had just gone through in front of 300 some people, okay? So the bottom line is I had a gift to speak, but at that time, I wasn't using my gift for God. And so once you realize what your gift is, you need to realize how it can edify the kingdom of God. And so we're all going, can have different gifts, but we all have gifts, okay? Um, so the deal becomes there is a danger of being carried away into false worship with your gift, okay? False worship, because... If you lose sight of the purpose of your gift, you can very well just start moving into a direction that takes you way far away from God. Okay? We have people who, uh, I, I personally, uh, they call people prosperity prosperity uh, preachers. I, I don't know if that's what, you know, a lot of people feel like they should have what they have. I don't have a problem with what other pastors have achieved in ministry and what God has allowed them to do. Because the only one that's going to judge them is going to be God. The key is, is does the word that they provide, okay, the, the ministry that they do, does it help God's kingdom, okay? And if at that time you see people that it helped, and it, and it looks like now these people are being um, enriched financially because of the God, what they're doing in the kingdom, then it's not our job to police them, okay? But it is your job if you have a spiritual gift. If you have, been, and, and believe me, when I talk to you about gifts, you're gonna realize that the thing that you are most, that you are really, really good at, is a gift from God. See, even though this chapter defines spiritual gifts, it does not mean that all gifts are being given to the same person for the same reason. Because this gift doesn't even talk about somebody with the gift to be able to sing. I, I know some people, I know some people that don't sing very well, but they worship when they sing and they can change the atmosphere of a room because of their spirit of worship. And, and that is how you use your gift. I mean, when, when I am, uh, f really feel the weight of the Holy Spirit on me, uh, my preaching is a lot different than it is when I'm trying to struggle to do things by myself. So I always try to make sure I'm connected to what God wants me to say. And that's what we have to do with our gifts. Um, uh, the, the, the problem is when, when we get carried away by idols, it changes what we're doing. And it's okay. So Paul wanted us to understand this danger. Okay. Uh, we had people in Corinth who spoke in tongues and distorted the great truth of God because there are, you know, it's just like these, now I, ain't, I, I have no confidence in these people. These prophets that say God is coming on this day, the world's going in on this day. Well, automatically, as soon as a person that calls himself a prophet opens their mouth and tells that lie, and yes, that's exactly what it is, it's a lie, I don't want to hear it. I, I really have no confidence in their ability to prophesy anymore. OK, because the Bible, the Bible clearly says, I said, he's coming like a thief in the night. No one will know the time or the hour. So how is it that you think God told you to tell us something that he wouldn't tell the disciples or and, and has never told anybody? He said, I'm coming. Our responsibility is to be ready. So I have a problem with that. Uh, so we have to be careful not to proclaim false messages in what we're doing. I can't sit up here and pray for somebody uh, to be healed, right? And they get their healing and then go run out and tell everybody, yeah, I did that. I didn't do nothing. You don't do nothing. We don't do nothing. What we do is we do what God gives us the ability to do. And it's done by the power of his Holy Spirit. Don't misrepresent God because of something, a gift that he has given you. We have to take care of the spiritual gifts we have, which is why we have to have a strong relationship 
with God. It is important that we have a strong relationship with God. Okay. Uh, becoming or sitting under a person who counterfeits gifts of the spirit. Uh, that's the problem. Because we're not to believe every spirit. Uh, but try the spirit is whether thou art God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay, uh, we have to look at Simon. Simon. Uh, who followed Peter, followed the disciples. He, he, was, he had bewildered a lot of people. Simon was doing a lot of things, and everybody thought he was some kind of a, a, a special person. But in truth, what he didn't have is what the apostles had as they walked the earth, okay? And so he had to ask for that. And then the next thing you know, he, he, he says he believes in God, he bows down, and then all of a sudden, the next chapter over, he's trying to buy the power for people to receive the Holy Spirit. That's not of God. OK, so there are people you're going to meet who are going to tell you that they love God, they believe in God, but how they use the gift that God has given them or how they seek gifts that God has for us is not of God. So you have to be careful with that. And so you need to pray. And I, you, this is why our personal relationships, relationship with God is so important. If you don't have a personal relationship with God, then a person who doesn't have a personal relationship but has an agenda, can take you wherever he wants to take you because he can tell you whatever he wants to tell you. And if you don't know what the word of God says, if you can't, I, I stress this all the time. It is so very important that we study to show our self-approval, workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, because nobody should be able to, you may not be called to preach, okay, because you know God's word. That doesn't mean you've been called to be a pastor, to be, an, to be a, a, a prophet or an evangelist. You may just be a regular old member of the church, but you and I have a responsibility to know God's word so people can't tell us just anything. That, that's just the truth of it, Okay. Because when we don't know God's word, people can tell us whatever they want to tell us, okay? The danger of speaking apart from the Holy Spirit. Mm, see, we need to have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of us. The paraclete, the comforter that I've been telling you about for weeks. It is important that we have the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truths. Because when the Holy Spirit is working to, to move through us and guide us in our gift, then we will move through it with all truths. We won't move through it being false. We won't move through it where we're misunderstood. We will move according to the word of God, okay? So we need to understand that Jesus is Lord and should be acknowledged and that it is to acknowledge his deity. Mm. See, when we acknowledge that he is God himself, the point is no man can please God by calling Jesus Lord apart from the Holy Spirit. See, it is the Holy Spirit that reveals to us who Jesus is. And if you have not uh, been filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and, and I'm going to say this, hear me when I say this, by the evidence of speaking in tongues, that is how that's how it was in the beginning and that's how it was in the end it's going to be for every day after that i know you may have laid hands on somebody and they got healed you may and god just might have wanted to use you that one time to get it done but if you have a prayer language where you have set before god and and set in his presence and he has gifted you with the uh, with the speaking of tongues uh, with, with the holy spirit by the utterance of speaking in other tongues that will mean right then and there that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. You ain't got to do it in front of nobody. You just need to do it where you know it was God, okay? Because you know who you're seeking. And that's the important part about it because Jesus, oh, wow, is everything that we need to move and go everywhere we're trying to go. Jesus is who, the with his Holy Spirit, is what removes doubt. Jesus is with the Holy Spirit, is what removes worry and fear and anger and all of those things. It is what causes us to be able to go get through things that we wouldn't otherwise get through. 
Okay, it is the, the, the word of the Holy Spirit that takes us where we are. And there are counterfeit gifts. Okay, yeah, there are people that look, I need you to understand something. Somebody hit me up the other day and said Saul actually spoke, went through a witch to speak to Samuel after he had died. And my first response to them was, you didn't know witches are true. There are witches in this world. This thing that the devil has done to give us the Harry Potter movies and Bewitch and Sabrina the Teenage Witch and I Dream a Genie and all of that stuff, it was to soften us so that we wouldn't believe that, that they exist and that way they could go about doing the work for him that he wanted done. I'm here to tell you they exist, okay? And, and they don't profess the truth. They profess a lie. And so because we need, and we need to be aware of that. Because everybody who cries, Lord, Lord, does not know God. And God don't know them. Okay? So, the, and, this is, and, and this is not new. This has been going on from day one. The whole objective of the devil had one objective coming into this earth. And that is to turn us against God. And it started with Eve. It came on up through... Uh, uh, the Caesars with, with, with all of these people that were against uh, the Lord and, and against the Jewish people. They, they, it came down through when, 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 when he tricked the Pharisees into putting uh, Jesus on a cross. However, Jesus wanted to go to a cross for us. He didn't have to go. He did it for us. But the people that did it were fooled into believing something false about him because they could not see what they needed to see. So we need to, we need, the one thing, that, and, I, and I'm going to say this because we're going to talk about uh, some of these gifts individually next week. We're going to speak to them individually. But I want to tell you, the one gift, if you don't discern, require, want any other gift, you really should want the discerning of spirits. You should want that. When the Bible teaches us that we should, that we should want prophecy above all of them. But discerning of spirits for the lay person is probably one of the greatest gifts they can get because that spirit will allow you to identify somebody who's not speaking the truth of the Lord. Okay. That's, that's just what it is. I, I really don't have a lot to talk about tonight. I don't even know if we're going to make it. Uh, but here's another thing that you don't want to be about somebody's gift. Don't be jealous or envy of somebody else's gift. Be happy for them, okay? Uh, because it can cause you to feel like you got a counterfeit gift. That's just the honest and goodness truth. There are people, I mean, you know, there are people who have gifts and talents to do certain things. And, 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 and think about how God gave out the gifts and the talents when he tells the story of the talents. He gave the five to the man he thought could handle doing the most with five. And then there's a big drop off because the next person he gives two. And the person after that, he gave one. And if you look at how he gave those out, giving the one to the guy he gave one to was probably the right, the, the, the smartest thing to do because he didn't do nothing with it. And that's something that you and I should both guard against not doing anything with our gifts. You need to know what your gift is. And the only way to know what your gift is, is to have a personal relationship with God, okay? Because when we don't know what our gift is, we are shortchanging everyone else that we know. And we don't want to shortchange people because we don't know what our gift is. Our gift should be stirred in our heart that allows us to push forward in times when things don't look like they're going the way we want them to go. That's what our gift should do for us. Our gifts should move us to another level in God every time we step, take a step forward. I heard Bishop Dale Brown uh, for a few minutes today, and he was talking about wanting to tap out, to tap out when, we, when it gets tough. And he spoke and he said that there are many times that because I didn't tap out or give up when my friends gave up, I reached higher heights in, in, new, in, in greater depths in what it is I was going, the direction I was heading. We cannot tap out when we're, when we're doing what we do for God, okay? 
Because sometimes it feels like it's time to tap out. I'm just going to be real with you. I've been there many times. But the only thing that's that keeps me going is knowing that God is on my side at, in all times. Okay? It, it, so understand this. You cannot move forward in your gift if you are ignorant of your gifts. And being ignorant of them means not knowing how God wishes for you to use them. Okay? Simply saying that Jesus is Lord does not mean to merely mouth the words. You can't call Jesus Lord and go out and live for the devil, in other words. You can only call Jesus Lord if you want to strive in your heart with all of your strength, with all of your soul, with all of your mind to give God the glory in everything that you do. That's my goal. That's what I really want you to take away from this. Because as we move deeper, you might be sitting out there listening to me and, under, and find out, you know what? I have that gift. I just didn't know what it was. So we're not only just going to talk about these gifts. I want you to be, I want you to understand how to use your gift. That's the key to this thing. Understanding how to use your gift. Not being ignorant of your gift. Not being fooled by people who you think got gifts and don't have gifts. Okay? You and I have to be on a mission to give God the glory at all times with our gift. Now, I don't know what everybody's gift is, but as we go down this journey, I want to help you discover what your gift is and in the discovering of that gift, how to use it properly so that God always gets the glory. I'm, 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 I'm quick tonight. Uh, we got about eight minutes left, but I am really pretty much done. I don't want to keep beating the dead bush because next week we're, we're going to talk about. Uh, last week, I spent a lot of time talking about the diversities of gifts. But next week, I want to talk about indivi and individual gifts and how we are to use an individual gift so that you will know if you got this gift. There are some people that have the gift of wisdom, the words of knowledge, and, and working of miracles, and all of these things. But we need to know how to use them. And so we're going to explore next week some specific gifts. Okay? I'm going to take some time with this because we're in Corinthians chapter 12 right now, but we're actually going to wind up moving to Romans chapter 12 and still be talking about the same thing. So unless you're ready to spend a long time with this, just like we spent. Because see, these gifts, the reason why I gave you... <laughs> Spiritual warfare from the start is because now these gifts tie in to how you battle with spiritual warfare. Because the one thing you need to know when you're talking to a, 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 a demon or a spirit that's trying to control your life, you need to know what is written. Okay? It is key when you understand that Jesus in the wilderness, when the devil challenged him three times, every time he put down what the devil said, he gave him the word. He said it is written and it is written will run will run the devil off in your life quicker than anything else. But you got to know. So get ready to worship God in your gift. Get ready to use your gift for uh, the, the edifying and the equipping of the kingdom. Get ready to use your gift to destroy these demons and spirits that are controlling what's going on in the world today, okay? It, it is so crucial. We got babies getting killed. We got cops killing people. We got mass murderers going on, and we are not using the authority that we have as Christian men and women to put God in the mix and put it all to an end. Get ready. God bless you, and good night.